Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 13.1 is finally out to the public. This is the version that really should have been iOS 13. It brings some features that iOS 13 was supposed to have and also brings a lot of bug fixes. So this one came in at 3.69 gigabytes on my iPhone 11 pro max, and it's going to vary depending on which device I've seen it as small as about 450 megabytes on an iPhone seven plus. So let's go ahead and talk about how to install it. If you're on the betas and then talk about the new features and performance and see how it is on older devices as well. If you're on 13.1 betas and you're using the beta program, whether that be the developer or public beta in order to get this update, all you need to do is delete the beta profile and restart your phone and then check for an update. So you would do that by going to settings, going to general, scrolling down until you see profile, tap on profile, delete the profile, then reboot your phone and then go back to your settings, go to general, go to software update and you'll see the update. It's a new update with a new build. And as long as you leave the beta profile uninstalled, you're now on the final version. Once you update, so you'll be good to go and it has a different build number. So let's take a look at that. You can see this build is 17 a eight, four, four and 13.1 is really what iOS 13 should have been to begin with. It fixes so many bugs and it's highly recommended. Now, as far as modem updates, there are no new modem updates. So the connectivity, if you are on the beta program should be the same as the last beta, but there are over 20 bugs that are fixed from everything to mail and all other, all sorts of other things like photos. I'll talk about those at the end of the video. Now let's talk about what's new, but before we do that, there is one new bug that we need another update for that we don't have yet. Apple has actually acknowledged it today and it allows full access for third party keyboards. So if you're not using the Apple keyboard and you installed a third party keyboard like Gboard, it now has full access to your device, even if you deny it. So keep that in mind. If you use the stock keyboard, there's no issues, but if you're using a third party keyboard, it may be an issue. Now Apple has fixed one thing that's pretty big for a lot of people. And that is under battery in settings. So if you go to battery and then battery health, the new optimized battery charging is now working properly. It wasn't working properly before, but now it should. So what this does is at night, maybe you put your phone on the charger, it will bring it up to 80%. And then after it's learned when it's picked back up in the morning, it will actually make sure that it's charged to a hundred percent before you get to that point. So it just tries to save your battery a little bit over time. Now there's two more things that are directly related to the battery. And the first one is this update changes the battery settings for battery optimization on the iPhone 10 S 10 S max and 10 R. And what that means is if you have one of these devices and the battery starts to deteriorate to the point where it can no longer support the CPUs power, it could actually shut down the phone if it doesn't throttle the speed. Now you can opt to turn this off until you replace your battery, but the only way to fix it at that point is to replace your battery. This is not a throttling of the phone. It's to keep your battery alive. Again, you can turn the throttling off. There's always an option for it. If you, if you actually have that, but the only way to tell that is to go into your settings and under battery, you'll see where it says peak performance capability. If you don't have peak performance capability, then you would have an issue. Otherwise you're fine. Generally a year later, you're probably fine. It takes a couple years at least for that to show up. So don't think that Apple is actually slowing down your phone. They're not, they're just making sure your phone will run and not restart on its own. Now, thirdly for battery, there's also a new notification when the iPhone is unable to determine if the battery is from Apple or not. So if you replace the battery in your old phone, maybe you have an iPhone six S plus like this one that needs a new battery and you replace it with a third party battery, it will no longer give you those optimization settings and it won't be able to determine whether or not it's real or not. It's just going to let you know, you can still use it, but the battery health won't work properly. Now, as far as changes and feature changes, the first one is incredibly minor, but the Apple TV app is now black and white. Instead of having a bluish color to it, it's a black and white icon. It's not a big deal, but that's one of the changes.
There's also changes to audio sharing. So let me show you what I mean. Now with iOS 13, you could already share audio with two devices such as AirPods one or two or PowerBeats pro. Now with iOS 13.1, it supports more devices such as H one chipset and W one chipset devices. So we have more options to share with different beats headphones as well. Now, in order to do that, make sure you're playing some audio in the background. I have an AirPod in with audio playing. And then if I pull down on the control center and then hit the airplay button, we can see our different headphones. So you'll see it says Aaron's AirPods. If I want to share audio, tap on share audio. It says bring the headphones near. We'll wait for it for a moment and it will take a moment to pair. And once it does, it will show up in your sharing headphones here. So you can switch between the two or share both of them just by tapping on them. Then you can control the volume back and forth on either device. So you can slide back or forth or you can tap and hold the audio volume button and control them here. And you'll see the little sharing icon. This hasn't changed as far as the icon, but the way you pair them is a little bit different. Shortcuts finally gets the automations tab that we've been wanting and automations allows us to customize a bunch of different shortcuts based on things such as when we leave a place or we can create a home automation now. So for example, if we arrive someplace, we can have it turn on the lights when we arrive there or have them turn them off when we leave now that it integrates more closely with home. Or we can use NFC tags, for example, and an NFC tag is a near field communication tag or basically a coil within a sticker or a piece of plastic, some desks, other things have it. And what you can do is create an automation that works as soon as you tap your phone to it. So you can have your lights turn on and off based on just tapping your phone to it. We've seen this in other phones before, but now you can do it with iPhone. Again, you can create home automations as well. So when certain people arrive or people leave or a time of day, you can have the lights turn on and off. It's really helpful if you want to create all sorts of automations. It's more for someone that wants to program a little bit, but it's pretty easy to use. Now we also have some new things in gallery and under gallery, we have shortcuts for your apps. We have essentials and new morning routines. And these are things that you can have such as remind me at work. When do I need to leave? You can have it create all sorts of different things and they suggest you different ones based on your regular routine. So it's just a little bit of an update, but it's more personalized for you based on what you're doing. Now, one of the new features is specific to the newest phones. So for example, you have to have an iPhone 11, 11 pro or 11 pro max because it has a new chip in it called the U one chip. Apple didn't talk about this at their keynote event at all, but what this allows is for you to actually point your phone towards a device to airdrop to it. So if I go into photos here and I want to airdrop a photo, you'll see it's seeing the devices that I'm pointed toward. For example, it's seeing my iMac pro my iPhone 11 pro, which is right here. And then it's also seeing the, this iPhone, the 6s plus, and also this eight here. So it's seeing that I can just airdrop to it and based on whatever's around it, I can airdrop to. So it's really neat. I have to show it to you laying down, but if you lay it down and just point it, it says to raise the phone. So it wants you to do it this way, but that's new due to that new U one ultra wideband chip that actually can sense things down to a very narrow margin of, of error. So it's really interesting. We should see some NFC tags or something in the future that allow us to find more of our devices or back backpacks and things like that, like a tile that they never release. So that's what this is for. And hopefully we'll see more uses for that in the future. Now within maps, there's a new feature and maybe we want to get directions to say Apple park in Cupertino. So we'll get directions and you'll see it's pretty far away. But what I can do is slide up here with the menu and hit share ETA or estimated time of arrival. I can share when I'm going to arrive with any one of my contacts and just let them know. So it's really nice. Just an added little feature that we didn't have before. There's a new feature in the find my app. So let's go into find my and under the me tab, if you go into that, and then you scroll up on the bottom menu, you'll see at the bottom, it says help a friend. You can now have a friend log in with their iCloud address and find their device if they're missing it. So it's just a way to help a friend out if they're missing their, their device or family members or anything like that.
Now in this update, there's no new emoji, but Apple has actually tweaked 24 emoji to better comply with Unicode standards. So here is an iPhone 10. This is running iOS 13. And then I have the iPhone 11 pro max running iOS 13.1. So we can compare and it may be difficult to see here, but there are changes to every one of these. So I've put them side by side. One of the easiest to see is the abacus here. You'll see on iOS 13, it's horizontal on iOS 13.1. It's vertical. So there's changes to things like mice, cow, mermaids, the Malaysian flag, and a bunch of different little ones. Even the puzzle piece has changed from blue to green. So they've just made these changes. They're there, but there will be a bunch of new ones later on, almost 60 of them coming in a later update. And finally, let's talk about all of the different fixes within everything. And then we'll look at performance and things like that. But there are over 20 fixes. There's actually 22 fixes that I counted and let me run down through them pretty quickly here. So blank icons showing on the home screen is fixed, fixed wallpapers when they weren't available to switch between light and dark mode. So if you're switching between light and dark mode, the wallpapers may not switch between them. Also, if we go into settings, and then we go to wallpapers under wallpapers, choose a new wallpaper and live wallpapers are now there. If you didn't have them on iOS 13 or the beta, also there's fixes to mail. There's fixes to Memoji recognizing your face. There's fixes to photos, reminders and iCloud lists. There's also fixes to notes. There's fixes to calendar fixes to file camera orientation, iCloud accounts, the share sheet being blurred in certain areas. It also fixes words that were misspelled and not showing suggestions when you tap on them. It also fixes multilingual typing, the quick type keyboard and third party keyboards have been fixed. Siri reading messages in CarPlay, also third party apps seeing mess or speaking messages in CarPlay. And then there's additional security updates on top of that. So there are a ton of fixes. And like I said, this should have been iOS 13. Now, as far as performance, I've been using the 13.1 betas and they are much better than iOS 13. The scrolling is great. And of course this is a newer phone. So let's take a look at a 6s plus, for example, scrolling is nice and fast and smooth. Most of the time you'll see it was a little laggy there just cause my phone, my finger hit it, but overall it's very nice. Maybe we go into the weather app. It loaded quickly. If we go into the app store, it loaded. There we go. You'll see overall performance is quite good. Even on older devices, the iPhone eight here, it doesn't slow anything down. You've got nice performance overall. And I even ran a geek bench on all of these devices. We'll take a look at in just a moment. But if we go into reminders, all of your reminders should now be there again. They'll sync across iCloud. If you use reminders, it's just much, much better. And like I said, it should have been iOS 13, but I think they had to push it out because of the new iPhones. Now, Let's take a look at battery and battery life. I've been using the iPhone 11 pro max. I'm still getting used to that word, but battery has been pretty solid on this. This phone has amazing battery life, but the betas were actually okay. I had them on my iPhone 10 S max as well. And I was getting about five and a half hours of screen on time. And you'll see here, this was a day or so ago, five and a half hours. I had about 25% left and the first few days of a new beta or a new phone usually use a lot more battery than you will later on. So overall it's pretty good. You'll see, I use Twitter a lot and overall I would say battery life is better on 13.1. Your phone usually won't get as hot and Ram management should be better across your device. So you won't have to reload as many apps usually. Now let's take a look at Geekbench, and I used Geekbench five, since this is the new one going forward, if you're comparing Geekbench scores, make sure you use Geekbench five because the numbers are much lower. So you'll see the single core score is 1,327, 3,456 on multi-core. This is on an iPhone 11 pro max. Now let's take a look across the iPhone eight and the six S plus on the far left. I have the iPhone six S plus and in the middle, I have the iPhone eight. 
and then on the far right I have the iPhone 11 Pro Max so hopefully that gives you an idea of performance it's just general and usually those numbers are going to go up a little bit as you use it throughout a day or so and it finishes doing any of its background activity overall I think it's a much better update and I definitely recommend installing it and you really should consider installing it if you're even on iOS 12 because it's just so much better I think overall now that it's more refined we'll see iOS 13.2 betas later on I'm sure to fix some bugs and maybe even add features eventually we are missing those new emoji so we want to see those as well to comply with the new unicode standard so overall there's a lot of features but we'll see more in the future so keep checking back and i'll have a follow-up on this as well just to see how it holds up after the next few days so that's it for ios 13.1 if you found anything i forgot to mention or haven't found yet let me know in the comments below and of course i'll link this wallpaper in the description as i always do if you haven't subscribed already though please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you'd like to see more of these videos as soon as they're released if you enjoyed the video please give it a like as always thanks for watching i'll see you next time